CSEC Biology with yours truly, Miss Shallow. In today's lesson, we will be talking about populations. This is the second video in our series on population ecology, and in this video, we will describe the oscillating patterns seen in populations, identify population trends from age pyramids, and explain the upward trend seen in the human population. So let's go! In our last video, and the link is in the description below just in case you missed that one, we learned that even though populations tend to increase or decrease, that most populations stay the same over time. We also learned that populations tend to reach their carrying capacity, which is the maximum number of individuals that the population can sustain, and that the carrying capacity is often due to some environmental factors, such as competition for food, competition for space, or even diseases. Today, we look at this increase and decrease pattern the oscillating pattern that's seen in populations and how one of these environmental factors, namely competition, results in this oscillating pattern. This oscillating pattern that is seen in population, an increase followed by a decrease followed by an increase again, can be seen when examining populations such as the snowshoe hare population and the lynx population. The lynx and the snowshoe hare have a prey-predator relationship where the hare is the prey and the lynx is the predator. Initially, the population of the lynx was on the increase and the population of the snow hare essentially stable. Then it began to decrease at the point where the population of the lynx was at its maximum. This decrease in the snowshoe hare population was due to predation. Lynx hunt, kill and eat the hare. And of course, this would increase the death rate in the hare population, causing the population to decline. But once the snowshoe hare population would have declined, the lynx population also began to decline. With less food available, the lynx of the population began to compete for food. Some lynx will not compete successfully and of course will starve to death. Their population would then begin to decrease. Once the population of the lynx has decreased, it means that the remaining members of the snowshoe hare population are being hunted and killed less. They have a chance to breathe, increase their birth rate, and the snowshoe hare population begins to rise again. The snowshoe hare population continues to rise while the lynx population is low. But in nature, organisms tend to breed when conditions are favorable. So with the increase in the hare population, there is an increase in food for the lynx. The lynx, therefore, uses this opportunity, they breed, and their population goes on the increase again. As the population of the lynx increases, the population of the hare begins to decrease again due to predation. Now, that cycle continues as the lynx constantly competes for food, causing their population to decrease, allowing the hare to revive, and once food becomes available again, their population goes on the increase. Now off to the human population. Trends in the human population can be seen by studying an age pyramid. An age pyramid is constructed by determining the percentage of the population that fall within specific age groups. The pyramid seen here indicates that the population is increasing. It has a broad base and narrows at the top, essentially a typical pyramid shape. 
This shape tells us that there is a large percentage of the population in the youngest of the age groups, which means that there is a high birth rate. And a high birth rate indicates that a population is increasing. The age pyramid seen in this figure is indicative of a decrease in population. A significant percent of the population falls in the older age classes and a smaller percent of the population is seen within the younger age classes. It tells you that the birth rate is low and a low birth rate indicates an overall decrease in population. If we were to stack the pyramid of an increase in population and the pyramid of a decrease in population together you get the age pyramid of a stable population. In this pyramid, the largest percentage of the population falls within the young adults category. And even though a significant portion is of the younger age class, a large percentage of the population is also occupied by the older age classes. This tells you that even though the birth rate is high, the individuals are reaching an ageable rate and the death rate is somewhat equal to the birth rate. Most populations tend to stay stable over time where the birth rate is somewhat equal or close to the death rate. The human population, however, has been on a constant increase. The human population is increasing exponentially and unlike most other populations where some environmental factor allows the population to reach its carrying capacity, through science and technology, man has been able to limit these environmental factors and therefore decreases the impact they have on population size. As such, the human population continues to grow. For example, through science and technology, we have better farming practices. We're able to develop foods such as genetically modified foods that are able to withstand pests and harsh environmental conditions. Food security is increased and we have therefore lessened the competition that we have for food among us as a species. In regards to competition for space, Humans have been able to expand our living space by pushing into one's uninhabitable areas such as forest. We have reduced the competition between ourselves for space but have increased the competition for space among organisms of other species whose habitats we are constantly destroying to increase living space for us. Science and technology has done wonders in the field of medicine and therefore we are able to decrease the death rate in our population. With the invention of vaccines and diagnostic tools, we are able to completely eliminate many of the diseases that once caused havoc on the human population. Doctors are now able to diagnose early and effectively treat patients prolonging their lives decreasing the death rate. Although we are unable to stop natural disasters, science and technology has allowed us to be able to monitor and even predict the occurrence of many natural disasters. Preparedness allows us to minimize the number of deaths that are caused by natural disasters. With all of this, it is safe to say that the earth is overpopulated. We have been trying to control the human population by lowering the birth rate through the use of contraceptives. But the human population continues to grow. It is safe to say that if we do not find a way to control the human population size, that either war, famine or disease would bring our population under control. In today's lesson, we learned that populations tend to show an oscillating pattern of increase followed by decrease followed by increase again 
and this is normally brought about by some sort of environmental factor such as competition for food. The age pyramids can be used to predict population trends in the human population and the human population has been growing exponentially due to the technological advancements that have been able to decrease the effect of these environmental factors that would normally limit our population size. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button and be the first to know when our next video airs. See you soon.